What's up, everyone? We are live. If you're watching this, you're probably watching the playback. I got a really special guest for us tonight. I got Danielle Arad of Gardecore. Danielle is one of my most favorite people to work with. We've been working together for a while, and I've known her for many years. Um, she's very smart, but that's not impressive anymore because we have a lot of smart people on. But she's a very unique angle and understanding of marketing and targeting that very few people do. She gets demand gen like very few others understand, and she's extremely ambitious in her work and in results. And I think you'll actually see that here. So uh, I'd like to, so without any further ado, a uh, statement I hate to say, further ado, Danielle, what's up? Welcome to uh, welcome to the show. Hey, well, thanks for having me. I'm actually super flattered. Thank you. That's, uh, wow, it's an awesome intro. Thank you. Yeah, no, so I mean, it's just speaking the truth. So why don't we take a little bit about, why don't we start off by a little bit about kind of like your background, how you got into marketing, how you got into demand gen, and maybe a little bit of your philosophy and uh, I think we'll lead in from there and then we'll kind of bring it into the topic of the conversation, which is actually uh, competitors. All right, awesome. Uh, yeah, so um, I moved to Israel about 10 years ago, uh, right after I finished uni and got straight into the high tech scene, which is booming uh, in Israel, as many of you know. Um, and I always had kind of a, a knack and an interest in, in business uh, ever since I was, I was pretty young and just hop straight into uh, the high tech scene in, in, in marketing. Um, actually I started way at the bottom, uh, kind of built myself, uh, built myself up, up throughout the years. Uh, and I, I was super interested in um, kind of learning how to persuade users digitally um, through design, through copy, through different kinds of uh, creative campaigns and marketing programs. And I, I found my sweet spot uh, at Gardecore, uh, cybersecurity company uh, here in Tel Aviv uh, that focuses on uh, preventing uh, lateral movement and reducing uh, the attack surface in, in enterprise organizations uh, through the use of uh, micro segmentation controls. So, uh, so yeah, it's, okay, it's so been... wait, 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 hold on. You just said a bunch of things. No one knows what the hell that means. All right, yeah. <laughs> so you moved to Israel 10 years ago. Where are you from right. in the States? I'm from California, from Southern California. All right. Yeah. All right, California, mm -hmm. IA. Uh, would you think that's right. surprising? You think if people were to guess where you're from, do you think they would get that correctly? Maybe like maybe ten years ago when I had like bleach blonde hair, but now I have low hair. I guess I don't know. <laughs> um, Wait, is this the uh, is this the two point oh? Is this Daniel uh, it's 2 the three? It's the three point oh. I'm in my thirties oh, now, so it's the three point oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, very nice. You're thirty exactly, right? I'm actually thirty two on Friday. Oh, okay. Oh, that's happy birthday. So you're Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, cool. And uh, great. Uh, so you got here and you got into marketing. Did you study marketing or what's your background there? I did not study marketing. I studied actually studio art. So I got my hands dirty uh, in, in college painting Are you artistic? And, drawing and doodling. I think, I think I, you know, I graduated with flying colors, literally. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> did you use that uh -huh. joke before? <laughs> Never. Was that, on, I, that was that was on the fly. I get it. Was it really? Gotta, That's pretty good. I gotta, I gotta write that one. You down. <laughs> your day is your day is complete. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. I did, I don't have a formal education in uh, in marketing, and I don't have a formal education in cyber. And I think kind of that's the beauty of digital because you can learn um, as you go, and you can learn. There's a lot of information online. Um, and point. yeah, yeah, and. Um, I think there's a beauty behind um, entering a very technical space and and building your way through that and connecting with with subject matter experts who also believe that you don't have to come from a traditional technical background or business background to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I'm passionate about that. And I, I know many who are passionate, both from a technical side and a more business side, who are very passionate about that kind of mindset as well. So Awesome. Uh, yeah. So let me ask you, I have, I get this question sometimes from prospects. <clears throat> Tell me what you think. Um, people say, oh, do you have experience in our industry, like specific in their niche? And I'm like, well, I do B2B tech, you know, a lot of the, the LinkedIn and the Google and the YouTube and everything, the SEO, the marketing that we do, I mean, it doesn't change that dramatically. Uh, would you agree, since you've ha worked in multi many industries in marketing um, and have worn different hats, do you, do you think that's true? Um, I think there needs to be a kind of a fundamental, fundamental understanding about the market that you're playing in. 
um, right. that that comes with you know um, learning and knowledge and passion to to understand the market and and but ultimately um, it comes down to to understanding people um, marketing is psychology um, mm -hmm. and where it you know, I hate to put it this way, but we really are. I think it fits also with the, the topic here. It, we're in a, in a game of um, mental warfare, um, mm -hmm. really. <laughs> it's a battle uh, of product, yes, but it's also a battle of perception. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you really need to understand, um, you know, who you're working with, understand their psyche. And it's, it's not easy to, to do that, obviously, but it requires a lot of communication um, uh, obviously, uh, knowledge, uh, and, and just, um, willingness to, to connect with, with people, uh, to understand their pain and need. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So th that's, that, that's actually a, that's actually an interesting, it's actually an interesting perspective that you really don't, but you know, it's funny, you, you I think you can get the pain in perspective actually pretty quickly, maybe reading a white paper, being on the website and whatnot, but there is something to it. I mean, I've been involved in certain, certain niches in LinkedIn, uh, doing LinkedIn marketing for certain clients and they got bought out, uh, by huge enterprise twice in the same niche. And then, so it's easy for me to pick those, uh, new clients like that up again, because I'm easily able to replicate knowing what ad messaging works, basically the keyword research that works, all that optimization, all that information I already has, and then I'm usually able to adapt and apply it. Um, yeah. So uh, let's get in. So the topic of conversation today is actually competition. We're going to get in that in a minute. Um, I just want to let people know that are watching, if you have any questions about competition in general, leave them in the comments, whether you're watching live or if you're watching recording later, we'll make sure to address them. So we do engage with all comments. We will be reading them here. Uh, so please, uh, please feel free to, to add your comments on, uh, on LinkedIn or Facebook. Yeah, I already see a couple, a few people. Sorry, can I shout out? I'd love to shout out. Yeah, what's Maybe up? I, uh, of course, shout outs. I see some people from New York also waving. So, hey, hey, Maria. What's up, New Yorkers? What's Maria's up, Maria? And, and Omri says, nice view from the office. Yeah. Uh, uh, where I'm actually in Omri's office. So for those <laughs> that don't know, this might look different. Uh, my internet had a meltdown today in, um, uh, and of course I called hot, hot as the internet provider. And it's just like, I was like, this ain't going to get fixed today. So I just trucked myself over to Omri who lives like a 10 minute drive. He's in a neighboring town in Kesaria. And so I'm actually working out of his desk and he just walked out. He just left. So I guess, uh, Omri I to the rescue. he didn't really have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go to Avner, our head of SEO, but he's dealing with something outside of the house and he locked up his office. So I, I didn't have the opportunity to go to our uh, SEO office. Uh, but we'll be coming back in the offices soon. When do you guys get back into offices? Um, well, our offices are open. Um, we, I think, could have 10 people in the office. We're, I think, a space of 75 here in Tel Aviv. But um, it's it's not mandatory, obviously. It's, it's whoever's comfortable uh, going in, and we have to have that form signed out mm -hmm. for, for approval. But uh, yeah, Gardecor has been really supportive in uh, in this whole time period, and, and super super connected with us. And, and it's nice to work from home. Honestly, get to see my baby grow. All right, cool, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what's up, Paula? How you doing today? Hey, Paula. Okay, so let's let, let's get into let's get straight into uh, competition. We have uh, twenty people watching live on LinkedIn right now. Um, cool. Okay, so uh, well, let's get right now. So there's a few topics we want to discuss, and if those who have seen my post yesterday or the one you shared this morning, uh, I wanted you. I wanted to start off with probably the most simple, the one people know the best. Um, is I want to talk about first, if you don't mind, we can go straight into Google search bidding on competition, and I actually yeah. have a story that happened from a. Uh, uh, David Miles in Office or so 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so last decade. Uh, it's funny. Um, so bidding on, on competition. So I'll tell you I'll over with a story that happened uh, literally just the last couple of days. We wait, have, wait, uh, before, no, don't, don't, don't sell any of my trade secrets yet. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I, I mean, I always say like <laughs> no one knows competition like what you do like what you do when it comes to like when i work with you as opposed to other clients all different clients they have different strengths different angles everyone has like a different perspective um and like but you come from this you really understand how to actually you, you don't come from like a point of envy when it comes to competition you come uh, from a point of hashtag winning um so i th i think that's awesome that's the right way to do it 
So I'll tell something that's actually just happened. I have a client in Philly who's a small lawyer um, relative to the big players. And we're doing a lot of competitive bidding. And we took mm -hmm. out unique call only ads. So only if only if you search on your phone um, and it says, you know, your first time callers only. So when they search for the competition, they don't want people who are checking up on their case if they search for his other lawyers. So we've been doing this and we've been getting scores of leads for like four years, basically. About 70% of our leads is actually from competition because here's one of the secrets is that cost often, cost per click for your competition can often be cheaper than elsewhere. elsewhere. The are some downsides is that your quality score will always be low because the quality score is a correlation between what people search for, what's in your ad and your landing page. So obviously you can't put your competitor's name in your ad because it's a trademark right. violation and you can't put in your, and you could put in your landing page technically, but uh, just so just so you're aware. Uh, so we've had, we've been doing this great. And then they sent him a letter recently saying, we see that you're bidding on our terms. Of course we don't have their uh, ads. And he, they told us, please tell your marketing agency to put, I don't want to say the company name, you know, this is in negative and one of their like terms they use to do a lot of TV marketing, a lot and billboards all over Philly. So people know to search for them all the time. They hear of them. And then how do they go and find them? They then go search for them on Google. Right. So especially if anyone was doing any kind of traditional marketing, you're going to end up searching for their brand. So if you have competitors doing traditional, you got to get straight into searching for your competitors. And uh, so I reached out to Google and I'm like, this is bullshit. How should we reply? And they're telling me, we'll send you cease and desist. I mean, great. Well, just so you need uh, like one of the biggest law firms in Philly going against like some small guy who's spending like, you know, seven grand a month in ad spend. And um, so we had Google wrote a, a letter for us saying that everything's legal. It's totally allowed. None of their ads. Da, 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 da. And of course, we're going to send it back and we'll see how it goes. They've already sent the follow up and they're going to say whatever. But anyway, of course, lawyers are assholes. That's why we, we hate them. They suck generally speaking, except for my client. He's fantastic. I love him. But <laughs> this is why people hate lawyers. And uh, so, but this is one strategy we're able to get so many calls and so many leads because people are searching for competitors. So if your competitor has a very strong brand name, especially in your niche, bidding on them is very smart. Um, I have some more things to add, but obviously I've like talked too long straight without hearing from you, Danielle. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, anything in particular that, uh, that you think of any do's or don'ts or any tips you think you can share about bidding on competitors? Yeah, I think in general, um, like as I stated before, um, well, let me, let me take a step back. Uh, and I'm speaking from personal experience, marketing and cyber, um, for anybody who has seen, uh, the cyber landscape, it's it's ridiculous like you're taking a look at at one slide with tiny logos of hundreds of security companies and um competing in that space is super overwhelming it's super hard um and it's it's you're dealing with um you're dealing with a specific set of personas who don't have a lot of time who uh you know are super busy uh, and who know know what they want for the most part. Um, I think that goes for every prospect in their mind and their perception. They're almost always right, and this is you know deals a lot with you know psychology and psyche. But um, you have so many brands, and so they 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 don't know really what to pick and persuasion is, is the key here. Brand, I think brand is super important for, for the long term and in, for driving demand, but how do you get that brand in front of an audience who doesn't have time in such a saturated market is super hard. And that's why I like to focus from the competitive angle because you're dealing with two sets of prospects. You're dealing, dealing with a set of prospects who do not know your brand um, they know the cyberspace, they know what they're evaluating more or less. And then you're set dealing with a set of prospects also in that subset, uh, in that set, but the subset is they're disgruntled potentially from another competitor. And so that gives you a nice edge to swoop in, especially if right. you're com coming from a smaller company with not as much budget from, from your, not as much budget as your competitors. So it's a nice way to, to win quickly. And, um, and and to drive demand um, that really benefits, like I said, it really benefits the the bottom of the funnel and pipeline. I don't know if that makes sense. I kind of ranted there, but um, no, no, it does. Um, no, I'll, I'll give some examples too. 
So like one thing is people always say like, oh, we're going to focus on our clients, our client, our uh, competitors' weaknesses, and we'll highlight that in our search ads when they search for them. And there's a problem with that. It's not a problem. That's good. But you should also focus on their strengths. Remember, people were interested and were talking about this company and searching for this company and know about this company for what they do right or what they perceive, what's perceived that this company is doing right. So what you need to do is you should actually take some of the messaging or why people like for them what, what they do right and include that in your messaging. And then, of course, also include what you do better. I, I think there's always one weak point in your competitors. So that's the place where you should be focusing all your time. And then finding that singular word, attribute, idea, and then adding value to it. That's what's mm. going to help you drive more, more leads and drive pipeline. Uh, that's, that's what's going to help you with differentiation. Yeah. All right. Finding uh, the, the weak spot. Yeah. Right. 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 And, Okay, so we got some comments from uh, LinkedIn. Nathan Jacobson, 2020 is all bedroom offices. So actually, my head of SEO, we were talking about like working remotely. And I was saying like, to hire like some, uh, we have, uh, uh, in order to increase capacity, we've been working with some um, people not full time, but we, I had one rule, you want to hire someone part remote because she lived far, uh, like near the center uh, of Israel, near Tel Aviv. And I had one, like my only rule was, she must have a room dedicated to her office. You can't, you, you got a place you can close or lock the door, no kids, no pets, everyone else in the household knows you're not allowed to enter. This is like holy space. Um, and if you don't have that, and I think that's the problem, I work from home alone, especially people that work in cities, they don't have that, you know, you, work, you live in a small apartment, you don't have that spare bedroom, you don't have that place to set up monitors, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, I see some people time working in the coffee shop. And we have, we joke around our office, like people in the coffee shop that are working, like, like if they don't have a mouse, they're like not being productive. You know what I mean? You realize that you try to, like you can't like, you know what I mean? You, like, well, does that make sense? I don't know. It does. Bad. I can't work without a mouse. Little, yeah, yeah, me too. Trackpad yeah, is you, too, too much to handle. Do you, do you remember why well, you're old enough? Uh, Miss uh, 3.0. Uh, do you remember back in the day when they introduced the scrolly part on the mouse, like th this in the middle of the, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. I have a couple yeah. cameras. So I remember when I was introduced, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And it wasn't my mouse when I first used it. Then it went back to my mouse. And I was like, where's the scrolly thing? It was, it was, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like the hard yeah, thing. I remember, remember. I remember the, the, like, the, the very geometric square mouses like back. Oh, my the, God. Remember those? Search they, for the first Apple they mouse. They clicked and you could hear it from like the end of the country. Right, right, right. Or the keyboard, <laughs> the keyboards with the, wow, that was so you good. You can Google right. image it for those that don't Love know. Them. The, uh, Apple. I thought I mean, I feel like the louder the click, the more productive you are. If well, it feels like, good. I think I think it releases getting, a little bit of it's a dopamine. Like, like, like. No, it, it's it's the dopamine. I think it's like it drops dopamines. You know what I mean? I, like, <laughs> have you ever used a keyboard that isn't like keys? It's just like they're like buttons on a on a touchpad. It just doesn't that's, feel wrong. You need that right. resistance or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Alex. You. It's something, right? I think it's like I think it's actually I think it's chemical releases. Uh, Alex Panchik says, if a competitor doesn't have a trademark submitted to Google Ads, can we search his brand name in ads? It might be a war, of course, but still, what's your take on this? Don't do it. Uh, first off, you could register your trademark with Google, and they'll automatically block it. it. Still, doesn't mean it's not legal. It could still very well be illegal. Technically, if, it, if it's not trademarked at all, then it's probably not illegal. Don't do it. It's not a good practice. I don't think it's cool. Um, yeah, so that's my that's my opinion on that. Uh, David Miles, uh, David Miles is cute. Uh, David, I think so. Tara's got a crush on you. She thinks you're cute. The new <laughs> office is your kitchen. That's not how she meant it. I'm just giving her a hard time. Uh, the, the new, she thinks it's common is cute, which it is. Oh, man, uh, the new well. office <laughs> starting like a war in the chat. The new office is your kitchen table with your kids screaming in the background. Right, which is why you need a bedroom. Uh, Maria <laughs> says, Breck practices and bidding for competitors, please. Okay. So first and foremost is I would originally set it to uh, enhance cost per click, meaning how much you want to spend per click at most. And enhance means Google might spend 20 to 30% more if they think they're more likely to convert. Um, if you're sending them to a landing page, that which we should get into actually right immediately after this. Um, if you're sending them to uh, a homepage, then I would might be go for maximize clicks. 
but then you need to always look at your search term, make sure you're not getting other crap for their search terms. Often your negative keywords you have on your brand, you should put your competitors like where's offices, careers, jobs, directions, anything like that, glass door, right? These people aren't going to be leads, right? Probably the same things used for your brand, you should put for your competitors campaign. And then the, uh, the landing page, you should do maximize conversion, maximize uh, uh, your goal should be leads, not, mac uh, not, not website clicks um, if you're sending them to a landing page. Um, and the other thing is keep in mind on your cost per clicks. And once in a while, take a look how your competitive ad compares to other competitive ads. Not exactly. So, like, so, so this is interesting, but not necessarily their ads. Let me give you an example. Let's say, uh, I don't know. I don't want to use any companies. So let's say you're a pizza shop, okay? Yoel's Pizza. And I'm bidding on Danielle's Pizza. So someone searches Danielle's Pizza and they'll see an ad for Yoel's Pizza. So look how yours looks, but also look at how there are four ads at the top, up to four ads. So look at Mike's Pizza that's bidding on Danielle's Pizza and uh, Rachel's Pizza that's bidding on Danielle's Pizza and kind of see how what they're using as the competitors more than what Danielle's messaging is per se. Because they're looking for Danielle's Pizza, but for a second, they're going to see yours and the other competitors. So you're kind of more, in a way, competing against other competitors, and you kind of want to see the message that they're using from a competitive angle. There might be some great ideas there that you can use bidding against Danielle's Pizza or other or other competitors, other pizza parlors. Uh, that so you're bidding I, I, I have a question for you, Yoel. If, if yeah. How often should you be looking at, at that, and how often should you be optimizing your, your ads against competitors? I think the first couple of weeks after that, I think it needs minimal. I mean, because... Like your brand, you once you have the search terms gone and you've added a couple ads that really do well, I think optimization is minimal. It's more about checking in, um, seeing and looking at other people's ads um, and how they're comparing. So I think if you take a peek, like after you're optimized, like for a month, I think even just taking a peek once every few weeks is mm -hmm. just for the competitors, specifically just to kind of see, um, look at the auction insights. An yeah. auction insight in Google is to see who else is showing up for those keywords and search terms. Yep. Uh, so who else is bidding on that competitor? The, that's probably where you should spend your time. After I think, you I think, the initial I think patience, patience is key. In, well, in, that goes for everything. Fit for paid search. No, yeah. Well, yes. But it, especially in paid search, it's like we're so eager to to check back at the results and then optimize a week in and, and not – not let the, the ad do the work, not let the, the user intent do the work as well. Uh -huh. and, and so sometimes we can miss the mark if we're optimizing too soon. So I think a key here and a best practice is to stay patient, at least right. a minimum of two, two weeks to a month, let the ad run, see how it's, it's stacking up against other, other ads. And don't get too obsessive about competitive. Right, right. Like, right. Just to kind of right. like let it do its thing, optimize, and move on and focus on the real keywords and the remarketing in your whole right. funnel. Uh, people that are uh, competitor obsessive or, or envious, uh, right. it's it's not good. <laughs> it's not healthy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, right. okay. So um, one thing that I've seen people do is they have, and what are your thoughts on this? If you have like <clears throat> uh, comparative guides of, if you send them to like us versus competitors, do you think that's good or bad? Do you think what are your I think thoughts that's, on that? I think that's excellent. I think that's excellent. Well, I mean, we need more. We all we all need more. I mean, everybody. The the sweet spot, <coughs> excuse me, is um, you know, looking for people in the evaluation stage. That's I feel like the quickest route to revenue, and um, you want to hook first uh, first and foremost the lower hanging fruits. Uh, to create demand, the people who are evaluating solutions know what they want, have a project uh, in budget. And, you know, there, like I said, there are so many vendors and solutions out there. This is a clear way for them to see the benefits and your value versus other solutions they're evaluating uh, in the market. Um, mm -hmm. It's a quick way for you to, um, to, like I said, to get your value out there. So, Super, super critical, I think, for, for any organization who's um, playing in a very saturated and highly fragmented market. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm totally for it. Can't get enough mm -hmm. of it. Awesome. Great. Uh, yeah. And Tara left. She said her kids are driving her nuts. So uh, what you should have done is put them in front of this video. That would have been more <laughs> sad. <laughs> then they would have been quiet even while I too, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Pro parenting tip. <laughs> yeah, parenting. all for it. <laughs> so then, maybe you can like maybe if you have like calls and your kids are loud, you can like stream your video to the other room, and they can just watch <laughs> you and they'll know. Kind of like when you're live on air and you have like the on air like outside, so people know not to come in when you're on, live on air on radio. I don't know if you've ever been live on radio. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Uh, not yet. Not yet. 
Not yet. Not yet. We'll get there. Okay. Let's move on to YouTube. Uh, can, I, can I discuss some successes that we've had uh, regarding yeah, sure. marketing? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, in case I don't know if I said this, Daniel's a client. Uh, so, uh, so, one of the successes that we do get, we have gotten feedback from specifically from prospects. So, no names. For those, no names. No names. Um, so well, there have been I, I, so many I can't remember. They, the specifically of prospects is that there's, um, let's take a step back. In B2B, cybersecurity, technology companies, we have a longer marketing and a longer sales cycle. So something I talk about often is the importance of touch points. I'm trying to slow down, but it's difficult for me to talk slowly, um, is, is touch points. And not just, obviously, they're going to be in your marketing funnel until they become, let's say, an MQL or an SQL, right? And let's say you get a demo or speak to salesperson. Um, that might be a while. But also once they get that demo and before that and them signing, that might also be a while. Why? They need to check their competition. They need to check how the technology will integrate. They need to make sure the pricing works. They need to make sure that the risk is, is good, that all of the decision makers are all on board, including, you know, not just procurement, the people who's the who's going to manage, let's say, the, the technology, um, the support. They might want to check out refer referrals. There's so much involved that actually makes once they got a demo and they're interested, a long cycle. Now, in addition to the early, after they get a demo often, they obviously are probably getting demos from a few of your competitors, as you should. And so we've gotten some feedback from, uh, um, from actual prospect talking about our YouTube ads. Uh, do you want to talk, you want to mention, you want to, you want to tell what they said? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> interesting. Interestingly enough, it, it was a prospect evaluating um, some, some of our competitors. Um, and when he was on YouTube, uh, he actually saw one of our retargeting ads and uh, felt guilty for, for not checking us out, um, which I thought was pretty you know, I'm, I'm sad he was felt guilty, but um, he, a, he must have a Jewish. But I was I was thrilled because he's like, oh, okay, I, I'm I, I I know the players in the specific niche, you know, uh, for for micro segmentation and, and hybrid cloud security, and and I need I need to check I need to check them out. Now I'm checking these other two competitors, these other two vendors in the space, but what about them? And and they saw one of our ads and uh, on YouTube and. And came and checked us out and, and had a had a demo with us and was pleased with uh, with our technology and with our values and um, and uh, yeah and went with us in the end which was excellent and it's hard to measure that the, 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 I think the hard it's thing it's not is, right that, that's correct people always say like oh what are the leads was all right the goal is not ROI the goal is to be in uh, on top of them uh, during during the sales cycle I'm actually yeah, gonna try to it, find out what you wrote yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's about getting your brand, like I said, it's about getting your brand in front of those, um, those prospects. And um, I think Dave, Dave Gerhardt, uh, CMO at Privy said it, said it well on one of his uh, LinkedIn posts that uh, brand drives demand. So. Correct. Correct. Which uh, is why I focus a lot on branding myself. Yeah. As I was, yes. no, I was very strong brand in Israel and I did it within a year. Actually, I found the message that you sent me. You said, Shavuot Tov, is going to be, how's your Shabbat between us? Great information, spoke with the prospect at blank, big name. He said our YouTube advertising really worked on him even during the valuation process when he was watching videos of our competitors. Oh, the there Gardicor, you go. Okay. The, oh, while he was watching videos of our competitors, the Gardicor ads kept popping up on him and reminding him of us. He said it really worked on him, even made him feel guilty he was looking at our competitors. Yeah, see, there so you this go. is one of the examples. And I get things like this all the time. It's the first time I heard someone say they felt guilty or they acknowledged that they were looking at but competitors. The, like I said, People it's all said about the videos work. Yeah, it's all about perception. Right. It's all about how you make them feel, too. So. Right. So, when, so, when obviously they're going to be looking at your competitors and <clears> looking at their demos. And one of the things is that decision makers, they're actually, they don't, they don't, people don't prefer not to speak to sales. So, they try to get as much information as they can before they reach out to sales, right? This is normal. This is fine. So they want to watch demos on their own. And people have recorded demos on their YouTube, you and your competitors. So if you got that remarketing going hard uh, for YouTube, particularly if, during your certain niche or for the right people who have been to the certain pages that have been in your demo page or anything like that, then what you're able to do is you can act, it, they can actually just see these videos, uh, your videos specifically, while they're watching other demos and reminded of yours. Extremely yeah, powerful stuff. 
extremely powerful, shortening, shortening the sales cycle, shortening the, uh, the sales velocity. So that, that's all, that's how you scale revenue. Right. M M Maria Velasquez says new marketing KPI is guilt. Yeah. All day. But of course, <laughs> but the question is, how do you measure it? <laughs> you can't measure everything. You can't, you can't, measure, you can't measure the YouTube. I mean, just like you might have, the prospect might have said that to your salesperson who told you or told me, there are, for every one, there's dozens others that are seeing it and are booking and work closing with Gardacore, closing mm -hmm. with my other clients because of that. So the goal isn't lead generation. It's just a really important touch point. Uh, if anyone has any other comments or questions about competitors, they can leave it in here. Anything else on uh, YouTube before we, we move on to, uh, to LinkedIn or is there something else you want to talk about regarding competition? I think the nice thing about YouTube also in the remarketing, it's, it's not too expensive. I'd like for us to explore that more. So let's talk about it offline. <laughs> it's not expensive. Action item do, you, for action do you know why it's not expensive? Tell oh, me it's more. Monday. No, I think I th I've told you this before I know. So it's a, it's a supply and demand. How many, there's like a kajillion videos on YouTube, right? What do they say? How many years do you, for all the videos on YouTube, how many how, how you can watch forever? And, or, and most of them, people want ads on their, on their videos. Why not? They can make some money, uh, even though it's a good, whatever. So, so many people want to place ads, but so many people are making videos and want to advertise those videos. Right. And so the supply and demand curve as advertisers is in our favor on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so that, that that's why that's why it's so inexpensive. And of course, don't forget if you do pre-roll, make sure you capture them in the first couple seconds. After five seconds on YouTube, they can skip. Yeah, um, the, all, drop all off, is, the drop off of engagement rate is super quick. So well, that's what the view through a, rate is. What percentage yeah. of people that saw the ad watched at least thirty seconds? Right. right. Okay. You gotta cool. have a hook hook right at the beginning. Okay, so let's do link. Let's go into LinkedIn for a second. First off, just LinkedIn. Tip, one off tip. Uh, one off tip about just when you're doing remarketing on LinkedIn, make sure you make an ABM of your competitors, also your vendors, who else you don't want to see your ads and make sure you exclude that as an audience because it's kind of relevant to competitors, but we're not talking about, that's just a side tip. Okay. Back to, uh, uh, back to the, back to actually targeting competitors on LinkedIn. So yeah. one of the things in general to do is, um, on LinkedIn, you can go to your competitor's LinkedIn profile uh, pages. And on the left, you can do this now, do it now. On the left, it will say ads. And you can actually see some of the ads that they have live. And from that, you can actually be able, you can actually be able to see what their messaging is. So you know when they're seeing your ads on LinkedIn and theirs, you can do very easy competitive research. I think it's funny and interesting that they that LinkedIn makes it so open and put ads there. I find that kind of, I don't, I find it interesting that that was a, a decision, a priority that they've done, given there's so many other things I know that they also need to prioritize. Um, but one thing you can do, and this is of course unique to your niche, and this is more, I guess, B2B, uh, because when you've, if you've ongoing customer or clients, if you can segment, so we're doing this for a very large client, it's not even doing demos, just awareness. Um, what we're doing is we're segmenting, they have a few big players, big competitors, huge names, Cisco, Microsoft, whatever. And so we're finding those, client uh who their competitors clients are that would be a good client for them and we're making abms and we're using unique messaging for each one of those so if you're working with whatever say cisco you're going to get ads related to people right the kind of work that cisco does what they're good at what they're bad at and around that and it's not even gated content it's just blogs around that the mm -hmm. same thing goes you know the microsoft would be the same thing or you can throw in there a comparison guide you versus cisco or whomever Right. So therefore, but of course, the challenge here is that you have to get a list of the customers your competitors are using uh, of the, your competitor, your competitors, customers. If maybe, let's say they have a SaaS thing that they put like code on their site or something that you can easily tr find it. There are other different ways to do a different market research and their software and tools that you can find it. So which, a, which, tool, which tools uh, do you think work well uh, out of curiosity? I don't. I think it depends whether it's on the site. If they let's say it's something they put in your site, if it's like Martech or something, you can tell what the cookies are. So let's say you, if Intercom's your competitor, right, and that goes on your site, you can be able, you can easily find out who those are, scrape a list, and make an ABM. Uh, but if it's not technology, then you really need to, you just need to do research. But really, yeah. you need to know. You need to you need to say, oh, know someone that really knows the industry that's really in it, really involved. Maybe yeah. even get a former employee of your competitor. That might know this. I don't know what's allowed or not, NDAs and whatnot. But you can 
I mean, I think you can figure this out. Uh, yeah. There is ways. Um, there, 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 there are ways, ways. And, and yeah, sorry, sorry, to there are ways. There are a lot of uh, a lot of tools, a lot of intent tools that you can get out there. Why don't you recommend some? Because usually this is something our clients uh, do. You happen to know any off the top of your head? Uh, depends on the industry, but you got to be willing to pay the price for for high quality tools. I got to say, uh, but in the end, that may you know you may get ROI from that and may cover the cost. So. Uh, it depends on the industry, I guess, is what I'd say. Mm -hmm. What's up, Sherry? Uh, I was to say hi to Sherry. I love her. Uh, Sherry Wright. Um, okay, fantastic. Uh, I think I didn't, I think there was one other topic I wanted to discuss regarding competitors. Is there Shoot. anything else you wanted to add? I think actually I wrote it down in my LinkedIn post yesterday. So give me a second. All right, I, let's take a look. And I'll pull it up. Um, anything else that you feel or do you ever notice like your competitor? By the way, you know what I find this interesting? When I, bef when I, LinkedIn early on, um, I, I noticed a lot of competitors like fill out forms if they see it, if you don't exclude them. When I used to do ads a while ago before you excluded them years ago, oh, yeah. that they'd like, they'd oh, fill yeah. out the form. They're like that curious, uh, you know, cause it's from remarketing, generally speaking. Uh, yeah. but I don't know. I find that to be like, uh, like no, I don't want to say in English, no, sh like shamelessly. Like, don't you think like, you know, poke around, you uh, know what I mean? But like, there are, there are ways. There are ways to poke around without being so explicit, I feel like, but... I don't know, but do you think it's... I mean, I, it I don't know how much it bothers me if I see... Is it No, it doesn't bother you. It's just, I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think it's chutzpah. I think it's just research. They're doing research. They want to stay ahead of the game. It's it's fair game. All they need to do is fill out a form. And yeah, you can block their domain and, and, and everything, but... Um, okay, so one last... Yeah, okay, I, so I, I personally think it's natural... They're doing the competitive research. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just kind of want to know what's going on. There's not like... Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got here... Uh, here are the points that we said we want to cover. Competitive research, which you want to talk more about. Competitive search, which we exhausted. Creating competitor guides. Maybe you want to talk about that. Excluding competitors on social, we did. Remarketing on YouTube, we did. Targeting competitors, customers, we did. Um, is there anything you want to talk about more about competitor guides, like you versus competitors, or competitive research? Um, I think the interesting angle to me really, uh, we, we could talk about it, but I think what's interesting is like, how do you, how do you stand out, uh, against competitors, especially if you have, uh, like one of the, one of the pains for me or, or the challenges right now is like, um, you know, what kind of creative campaign can I create that will, um, compel my audience? What story will compel my audience and, and, like, how can I, how can I, um, you know, display that in a way that doesn't like copy what my competitors are doing? Cause they were quicker to market by the way, tip, you know, the tip I think of the day really is not to strive for perfection, but to strive for good enough. Because if you strive for perfection, you're delaying your entry to market and your competitors are going to beat you to it probably. And then you're losing right. that edge. Um, that's that's no, how the, that first mover advantage is huge. Yeah, it's huge. And then if you're not first to market, like how, what kind of story do you build to compel your audience who's super busy, who's super cynical and has like 700 vendors pitching them every day? So um, to me, that's, that's, that's kind of a pain point and that's a challenge for, and I think for, for many, um, I think, and, and it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning is like, you, you need to be, pick that one attribute that one differentiates you from the competitor, obviously, but I think um, what's critical is picking the attribute that touches on the weakness also of, uh, oh, cool switches, that touches on the weakness of, of your competitor. Um, that's gonna show, that's gonna show the value and that's what's gonna hook the user. Um, and yeah, so. And then the comparison guides are part of that process. That's, that's part of the, that could be like the, the, um, the main piece of content that will surround your specific, uh, you know, competitor play. But, um, but the, what, what's most important, I think, in, in building up a strong uh, competitor campaign or comparison campaign is, 
is the story and the differentiator, that one attribute. Um, it starts from there. That needs to be that needs to be defined first and foremost. It's a right. challenge. It's hard. It takes time, but be be good enough. Go test it in the market, and then optimize and strive for perfection. And yeah. and we're we're dealing we're dealing with that challenge, right? We're like we're trying to make some podcasts. Dude, and wait, I'm, before we get into that, let me give an example. While you're just talking, so for those that don't know, uh, I switched cameras. Can you tell? I can I tell because I can't see your beautiful face. I know, I know. So I had a better camera, which is my phone, the Pixel 4. It's a great camera. So uh, I had it on Do Not Disturb, but I forgot I have a feature. If you're on my favorites and you call me, it overrides Do Not Disturb. So it was probably like my wife or like a, or a couple of people probably just called me. And it overridden. I just heard that and I couldn't hear you. I'm like, crap. So I'm in like the, the live studio in StreamYard and I just swap cameras to my laptop where I can see your face. And uh, that's why. So right, this is... You got to just do good enough. You got to kind of like, it kind of goes into what you were saying. You kind of got to get it up and make it good enough, right? People yeah. spend so much time trying to get things up and going. Yeah. 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 Sorry, you can't see this put them all glowed up. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed. I'm bummed. I know. But you, have, you, have a nice, you have a nice silhouette. Oh, I think, <laughs> you know, I need a little halo. We do have a, a ring light here. You know what I mean? Like to put on top of yeah, Okay, so let's talk about, talk about cop podcast for a minute. And then we'll end yeah, up. yeah, let's talk about podcasts. Any other comments or questions, uh, now's the time because we'll finish up in a couple minutes. So, um, yeah, so podcast. So, it, I mean, you showed me what you're working on. You've already got a logo. You're doing everything. Is, is it possible? Do you, do you, have you over, have you over planned? Over planned for sure. Over planned for sure. Um, I, I was striving for perfection. I just got to get out there with the content. People want to hear content in any form, way or form and um, want to hear, read, see. Um, and, you know, you got to see if that content resonates with them, if the stories resonate with them. Um, you can do the research. You can make assumptions, but get the content out there. Um, uh, and see, yeah, see what works for them. And I haven't done that, and I have to do it. And I'm beating myself up about it. So well, I'm, I don't hoping, uh, I'm hoping this month I'll get it out. But, but why not just like do a podcast, get it up, and then figure it out as you go along? Is that like everything else? It's like all those people that like. They spend I, I think there, like, there needs to be some. Married, they're not ready to have kids, and they, they delay, delay, and they're like, you're never ready. It's never good enough. Yeah, I mean, there needs it's to be like problem. I said, there needs to be planning. There needs to be some planning, but you know. Uh, you can't go, you can't go full scale, full scale. In my opinion, you got to build it as you go. Yes. But you gotta, you have to define your, your objectives and, and the key results you want, um, uh, you want to hit and, and some and milestones based on that. So, um, so that's what I've been doing during the Corona time, um, is, is, is looking at new ways to kind of, uh, present new and fresh ways to present my opinions about cybersecurity and marketing and uh, hoping to get get this live soon. So awesome. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's an experiment. So get shit up. Uh, Eric Reese says, right, in the, the lean startup, he always talks about it. Yep. Just get a good one. You're you're gonna get better by the feedback you get from your audience. Exactly. Like exactly. I'm gonna figure out this whole video and uh, audio and everything as I screw up and I keep upgrading my material. Not not doing hours of research and then trying to figure yeah. it out. You know, crap, this is too technologically advanced for my needs. There's you know what I mean. Yeah. I, 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 I think I think thing. this this specific period opened up room for imperfection even more so than before. Like you have Zoom, you have audio flaws you have video flaws and people are used to it like it like it's been months already that people are on zoom or some form of video conferencing and it's not the strongest it's, it's like widely used and it's not the strongest form of production just use that as a tool you know what i mean and that's good enough they're used to it people understand right. that that's what they're going to be given and and it's that's what's easy that's right now what they're used to digesting so it's good enough right for right now to get up in line and as you go, when you start, you know, building an audience, building a subscription base and even maybe even making money, you know, invest in, in a little bit better production. That's exactly, exactly right. Just do it and you'll be better. Yeah. Get a little bit of the camera, get a little bit of money, find out what you like and you don't like. 
and all exactly. that. When's your first episode? When's your when, when's your podcast dropping? I'd like to draw a line in the sand, fifteenth of June, that I get to talk to. I bet that's going to be mine too. Podcast partner, which What's you know. up? we'll challenge each other. I mean, I've been making doing these lives almost weekly for over a year now. I don't know if I should load them up as episodes. Should I or not? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. As a negative episode. Uh, I feel like start with like episode twenty-two. Yeah. Do anyway. it. All right, sweet. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Danielle, for joining us. Um, and thank you, everyone else, for joining us on LinkedIn and on Facebook. If anyone has any other comments or questions, you can reach out to Danielle directly or to me. Where's the best place for them to find them? I'll just say LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, Danielle LinkedIn. Arad on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, for sure. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And uh, th thanks, everyone, for joining. And have a great thank day. You. Stay safe. Thanks for having me, Will. My pleasure. All righty.